morning everybody. I'm very excited today to share with you our little in the hoop baby that we're going to make. I'm going to teach you how to do that today. Little yellow one with a little nappy on. I'll show you how to make the nappy as well. The nappy I just added some snaps so you can just quickly clip it on like a real nappy. But I'll show you how to do all that on your embroidery machine. These dolls are very fun to make. Um, there's a little bit of hand sewing involved, but it really goes quick. Um, so I'll show you. I actually made four dolls in one day, um, and that was designing the pattern as well. So they go fairly quickly. Um, the whole file has about 8,000 stitches in, so it's less than a normal 4x4 design overall for, for embroidery. The rest is just simple assembly, uh, but it really goes quickly. And they make the perfect Christmas gifts this year. So let's get started and see what we will need. First, this, let's discuss the fabric we're going to use. Um, I've decided to use this. This is a, a nice thick coral fleece. It's nice and fluffy. I like the velvet look it has. You can, if you want, use um, thinner fleece as well. You can use a stretch fabric. I actually contemplated on doing one in scuba fabric, but I'll, I'll do that and maybe see how it comes out. Any stretch uh, fabric should work fine as well. Not too stretchy like t-shirt, um, as I think it might distort the shape a little bit if, it, if the fabric is too stretchy. Fleece has a little bit of stretch in it, not, not a lot at all. Um, so, but it, it gives a nice shape and it's nice and soft for, for kids to play with. So decide on the, on the type of fleece you like, um, and then yeah, we will just use that. For the limbs um, and your body, actually all the parts that will be one hooping, your arms is one hooping edge, your body is one hooping, and your, your legs as well. And all of these for the 5x7 um, hoop, for example, you can cut uh, roughly 6x6 blocks of, of your fabric so you'll need one front one back one front one back for all the limbs and such so um, that is for for our body um, this some kind of stuffing I prefer to use I'll show you this you get different kinds of, of stuffing this one is a quite loose stuffing but it stuffs beautifully and gives nice round shapes because it's really soft and uh, it just covers all the little holes inside and compact quite nicely. So you, you can um, try and use the, uh, get these if you can. If you can't get these, basically any stuffing will do. It's just a matter of, of uh, preference. For your nappy, you need one layer of fleece. I use a thinner th fleece for the nappy. I don't want the, my nappy to be too thick. So you're going to use one layer of fleece. And then you're going to use one layer of fabric of your choice for the, for the other side. As you can see, I've got the print on this side, and on the inside, I've got the fleece for my nappy. For the nappy size, um, for the 5x7, I really try to make it in the hoop file, but it's just not going to look neat. If you look at the nappy um, shape, uh, for the 5x7, I would need to really cut it in four pieces to make it fit in the hoop um, so it, it's not really um, going to end up being a very neat nappy if I uh, try to make this in the hoop file so what I decided to do is to include a template for you in PDF format so you will just go ahead and print your, your template you will see it will print as two pages there is registration marks where you line up the crosses there and then just tape it and cut out your template and then take your fabric and cut one layer of the, um, your printed fabric and cut one layer of your fleece. You will then put it right sides together and stitch around but leave an opening on the back. You will see um, on the, the bottom of your template there's a little opening I'm showing you there. So you won't stitch there, you're just going to stitch around with your normal sewing machine. Uh, make sure it's, it's nice and secure. Then you'll um, clip it out about a quarter of an inch from the edge. You'll turn it inside out and you will iron it flat. And then 
but on the opening you will just fold in your little tabs there and you will just um, do a stitch to uh, close that little opening and then we're going to add our snaps um, the markings is also on the on the template for you so you can see exactly where to place your snaps but I will show you everything as we go along so that's what you need for your nappy then the snaps is optional um, I don't know not all of you do have the, the little snap machines it does look very professional if you using the snap tool uh, these are cam snaps you get the hand tool you can use or I've got this little big um, iron machine that I use so it just depends uh, you can just use the hand tool to insert them as well it's quite easy if you do not have the snaps by all means you can use the hand sewn snaps or you can use uh, velcro as well um, anything just to keep the nappy in place to, uh, to, for kids to be able to remove it easily if they need to. Then let's talk a little bit about accessories. Uh, remember um, girls you can put magnets anywhere if you want for example a little bow that you can just with a magnet attach on top you will just glue a magnet to the inside and glue a magnet to the back of your um, little bow and it will just sit there the minute you put it on. So you can put accessories wherever you want on the doll by inserting magnets in the inside and then on your accessory you add your magnet um, to the back as well. Um, these are just panty lace that I've used and I've added a little bow on top for a little headband. These are just little bracelets I made with elastic thread, jewelry thread and little beads just for little finishing touches and then the booties are um, crochet booties there are various patterns online so I'm not going to share patterns over here because it's not my own creations um, so yeah go online go see for patterns or if you uh, get somebody that can crochet for you uh, by all means they, are, they can really crochet the, the cutest little booties for you the, the perfect size for your doll Alternatively, like I said previously, um, you can just uh, go to the shops and see if you can find preemie uh, baby clothing and just buy from the shops whatever you can find. These are all store-bought and they fit perfectly well for your doll as well. So see what you can find in the shops and have fun creating beautiful little babies. I'm not going to use on these babies the, the joints for the simple reason I don't want you guys to go out and buy a lot of stuff and it becomes really expensive to make these dolls. Um, my goal was really to, to give you something that is not going to cost you arm and a leg to make, um, to make them affordable. So these ones I've just attached with um, crochet thread and a needle. But I'll show you how to do it. You can either, like I did this one, it's got repositionable limbs so you can turn them the way you want this one I actually sewed so the limbs stay static um, more or less so it all depends on how you want to sew them together um, yeah so but I'll show you all of that if you do want to to use the limb joints uh, by all means go to the shop it's little discs with little pins that you place one side one inside one on the outside and they just clip together I'm going to start with the head because it's got the most stitches on. Um, all the other, uh, the arms and the legs and the body is literally, you will hoop then stitch the first step if you want. You can actually leave that on for later if you use the correct size hoop. But you can stitch the first step which will give you an outline, show you where to place your fabric. You'll place your fabric both layers and then you'll just stitch the final step. That's what it is for the arms, the legs and the body. So you've got two pieces of fabric and you simply stitch the file. It will leave an opening, so we'll take it out, we'll cut it out and then we'll turn it inside out and stuff it. Easy as that. For the head, because there's embroidery onto the face, uh, we'll hoop tear away. This is a, not a very thin tear away, it's kind of thick but it tears very easily as you can see. So hoop a layer of tear away and then take it to your machine and we're going to stitch the outline to show us where to place the fabric. 
I've stitched the first step so you can see um, in a dark colour, but of course you'll use white. If you use white fleece, if you use cream, you'll use a cream thread. I just used a pink so that you can see where it stitches. Um, after you stitched your template, I would say, you will just add your layer of fabric on top. Now I'm going to add with the, my fleece as a one smooth side and one very rough side, so I'm just going to use the smooth side. And I'm now going to take it back to the machine and it's going to stitch for us uh, the little face, the eyes the, uh, and everything on top. I'll be back after the face is done. Because I was stitching on this very thick fleece, um, I forgot to uh, remind you to add some water soluble on top or a plastic. Or well, I just used another layer of tear away that I've just added on top and then I've stitched my face. So I'm just going to now remove the tear away. And there you can see the little face. I'm now going to add another layer of fabric on top and I'm going to stitch the final step which will tack down everything and then we're done with the head, quick and easy. The head is all stitched so I'm going to remove it from the hoop. And while the tear away is still on, I'm going to cut it out. It just makes it easier to cut out than working with a very floppy fabric. So I do recommend to, to just leave on your, your tear away for now. Uh, we'll take it off after we've, we've cut out. So just cut about a quarter of an inch away from the, the stitch line. You can see I turned my head wrong way facing me so I can see the, the stabilizer quite well. And where the stitch line is because it pulls in on the other side so it makes it difficult to see. You don't need to be very precise as long as it's cut now then just clip close to this um, stitches around the tight um, curves and into the areas that needs to bend where the ears are for example and you can now remove the tear away See it comes off quite easily. Throw that away, all the fluff. And then you can turn your head inside out. With the larger uh, dolls it's easier to turn around. Uh, with the smaller ones you might need some tools or whatever you find easier to, to turn it inside out. Make sure you press out the ears. And there's your head. We're now going to start with putting our doll together. I've uh, went ahead and I've um, stitched the whole doll to save us some time. Now this you can see is, is the larger doll that we just did. This is the smaller one. You can see there's quite a bit of a um, difference in size. So let's get started with the assembly. You've got two arms, two legs, a body and your head. And we're ready to get started. We're first going to work on our head. Now press it flat and turn your ears, make sure that your ears is nice and round. And then take it to your sewing machine and your ears, you're just going to stitch a straight line across the ear just we don't want to stuff the ears otherwise it's going to look like two round balls on the side of the head so you're just going to stitch a straight stitch through all layers uh, to, to shape our ears now we need a little nose to go on top of our 
little doll. As you can see I've added a little bump for her nose. That's quite easy to make. You just take a small piece of uh, your um, fabric, take a needle and some crochet yarn and just go more or less in a circle. doesn't even need to be perfect. The fleece is thick enough so you don't need to actually stuff the little nose. When you pull it into a ball, you will see the nose shape. So you can see I just go in and out very quickly, all around, and then just pull tight on both, and you'll see a little ball form, which will be our little nose. You can tie this off. And if you want to shape it even a little better, just hold on to the, the round part, take your thread and just turn it a few times around that little ball and then just tie it off. Just cut off these pieces of yarn and I'm just going to cut off bulk of the bottom of my nose. So there's my little fluffy nose. We now want to sew it in there but because of this big thing at the bottom we can't really just sew it on. We need to actually make an incision, place it inside and then we just stitch all around. So with my scissors I decide first where I want my nose to sit. I then just make a small slit, very small because it will stretch open as soon as you, you place your nose inside. So press your nose through that little hole so it sticks out at the top. Of course if you want a bigger nose by all means you will just make a bigger bump. Take a piece of your crochet yarn. Crochet yarn is quite strong so it's advisable to use that instead of embroidery thread. I like to use the, the thick fleece for the simple reason it's very very forgiving um, when you uh, start sewing together because you, you won't even see uh, where you place the stitches uh, because the stitches really pulls into the fleece. So the th thicker fleece is really nice to work with and especially if you don't like sewing like I do, I hate um, hand sewing actually so I try, always try and make it as easy as possible but I do like a perfect result and a neat finish so I would always try and find a type of fabric that that works best to accommodate my laziness I'll just stitch through This really actually goes very quickly. It's not very time consuming at all. And there's our little nose, all set in place. We now need to put the placement for our dummy and for our magnet that we're going to use. I'm going to put 
one magnet inside the dummy already. Oops. So you're going to use two magnets. Place one inside the dummy. Place your dummy where you want it to sit, right under the nose preferably. The nose should just be over the dummy or the pacifier. And then on the wrong side you will place your, your magnet. And you will see it, it will keep it in place. You still can now move it around, but it, it won't um, go off. You will now turn it inside out while it's in place and using fabric glue or super glue or I just use a hot glue gun and I just glue my magnet in place. With our dummy now in place, you can see it just snaps on. Sorry. It just snaps on in place with your magnet that you glued inside. We're ready to stuff our head. So I'm going to remove the dummy for now. The magnet, as you can see, is stuck on using my glue gun on the inside. And I'm now going to start to stuff my head. It's very difficult to say how much stuffing you're going to need because it, everybody will, will stuff differently. Um, if you like a really hard or full bodied baby, then you, of course you'll add more stuffing. If you like it softer, then you'll add less stuffing. Uh, so it really depends. Also on the hoop size you're going to use, if you're making the larger baby, of course you'll, you'll use a lot more than with the smaller baby. So just stuff it in there and try as you go along to compact it to form the shape The legs and the arms might be a little bit difficult to stuff because the opening is quite small. By all means, if you need to, cut it a little bit bigger uh, so you can get in there quite well. Um, otherwise, use uh, something like uh, the back of a fork to help you push the batting or the, the filling inside. Now, the heat I uh, I had quite a bit. I like my head to, to be as round as possible. So I do add a lot of stuffing into the head. The um, arms I don't, I already stuffed these. You can see the arms I didn't do as thick, even the, um, the feet. But it all depends on, on the look you want. Compacting it tightly in there. See I'm manipulated inside the head so the head is nicely shaped. I like to have nice round cheeks so I put a press some more here in the corners where the cheeks are. So you can really mold your head the way you want. Just long. 
those little bits in. I'm just going to take my finger inside and pull it here to the cheeks. And these are heat, all filled. Okay, so we've got our two arms, the head, the legs all stuffed, the nose is in place and the magnet is in place. Remember, like I said before, uh, before you stuff the head, if you would like um, a little bow on the head with a magnet stuck on, remember to add your magnet on the inside before you um, start stuffing, um, adding the stuffing in. Okay, we're ready now to close all parts. So take your crochet yarn, this is a crochet number five, and you're just going to go, same as we did with the nose, just in, out, in, out, in, out, all around, very roughly. Really don't need to work neatly or anything, leave a little tail there, so we can tie it. Like I said before, this um, type of coral fleece is, is quite thick. And fluffy so it's really very forgiving in hiding all the stitches so after you've done that just pull it close until you see the hole closes up nicely and tie the end and you're going to go ahead and close up all your your panels so they all closed up I'll be back when that is done I'll just show you for the legs and the arms. Um, you're just going to push um, the rough areas inside so that it gives you a nice round hole. Then just press it flat and then simply stitch that hole closed like so. You can see the stitches totally disappears with the coral fleece and you don't even notice where I closed it up. Really, really quickly, it's literally five stitches and the hole is closed. So it really doesn't take a whole lot of time to do, it's very fast. I'll do just end to end it off, push it all the way through to the other side. Pull it in not too tight and then just clip it off. And there you can see it's a nice neat end. You don't see any stitches. For the head, we're going to do the same as the body. We're just going to go around like a normal thread stitch, leather stitch, I think they call it also. just going to go all around and then we're just going to pull the hole close like a drawstring bag so take your ends just pull tightly till you see the hole closes up and then tie your thread that's why it's important to use like a crochet thread it's nice and strong going to go to make extra shirt tight just going to do a few stitches and then just tie this again and cut off okay there's our little head all the panels is now stitched closed you can make sure your dummy still goes on the right place when you pop it back in so you still have a chance to adjust if you're not happy with that. I'm quite happy with how it's going. So I'm now going to attach my body to my head. Now you'll see this almost look like a bean shape. So where the, the big round part is, that is the tummy area. This is the um, midsection of the back and this is the little bum. So remember to put your to make sure that you've got your head on correctly so that it goes. The face um, must be forward with the, the roundness of the body. 
so you can see how the, the shape goes. So you'll just put your head in place. Now the head, we won't make a, um, a turnable head. Um, you can, like I said previously, add your um, little um, toy movable arm and head discs in. Sure, kitty. And um, that will, will uh, enable you to, to turn your head. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to use those discs. Um, I'm, we're just going to stitch the doll together um, like I'm going to show you now. So again, take a nice long piece of your crochet thread. Let's get it through the needle. And then just on the side, it doesn't really matter where, just tie in your, your thread. So that it just stays secure with the head. You can start at the head or you can start at the body. It really does not matter. Then make sure you position it right. And just pull it tight. And you can go all around the head. One stitch in the head and one stitch in the body. And then pull tight. So you will go all around your head and your body until it is firmly in place where you want it. I can't stress enough how happy I am with this coral fleece. Um, like I say, I um, do not like hand stitching at all because I never can get it neat. And I, uh, if I give something um, as a present to somebody, I really want it to be neat. Um, so this is really so forgiving and not showing any of my stitches. It just pulls right into the fabric. And you can see I'm, I'm really going quickly. It's not like... I'm actually worried that it's not going to be neat or anything. As long as it's secure that it won't fall off. That's the main thing. Now I'm not a professional doll maker. This is my first doll I'm making. So there might be other ways of doing this. And I'm sure there will be many of you that's more experienced at this than I am. So feel free to leave your knowledge and tips and share it with us. I really do not mind um, any feedback in this regard. Somebody pointed out that um, these dolls do have small parts, for example, the dummies, etc. That might pose a choking hazard. So please, people, just make sure if you make, the, make it for kids that you do make it safe. And that all parts that might cause a choking hazard um, is secured. And that the parents you give these dolls to uh, are firmly aware that it does contain small. Our head is now on. I'm just going to show you how to contour. Um, if you look at one of these babies I've finished, it almost looks, I don't know if you can see, as if the cheek is more rounded. So what I've done is actually pulled this part in to give that contoured facial look. So I'll show you how to do that. Take your needle and thread, remove the dummy for now, and then right in the neck area, you're going to insert your needle and just push down and you want to come out right next to the nose um, in line with the eye. You want to come out Oh, where is that? There you go. Okay. Leave a, a nice tail so that you can tie. And then about a um, half a, or quarter of an inch from the closer to the eye, you're going to go back in and you're going to come out roughly at the same spot that you were in. So it's going to make a little stitch there. It's going to look like a little freckle anyway. So 
And if I pull it, you can see it pulls the eye downwards into, so it actually makes your cheek rounder and your nose more indented. Um, how deep you want it, is, it depends on what you want to do. You can pull as tight as you want and then just tie a knot. And then we're going to cut off that part. And we're going to do the same for the outside of the eye. So we're going to go into the, that area again. And then right next to the eye on the cheek cheekbone area, we're going to come out. Oops, now I pull this right through. And just do that again. I'm going to come out there. Sorry, I'm off camera, yeah. And then a quarter of an inch to the side, and I'm going to go back in there and right down to the bottom and pull through. So if I pull it, you can see what happens. A little indentation forms and you get a more contoured, more realistic look to your face. Just pull it as tight as you want and tie it off. This is totally optional. You do not need to do this if you do not want to. Um, I just felt it, it gives a little bit of character to your to your doll and makes that face really become cute. Go out that side. Camera is too far from me today. And I'm gonna pull and you can see the little nose goes upwards like a little we call it an Afrikaans of Ipneus. And I'm going to tie it off. And then I'm going to cut that string. Let's take another piece. Thread it through my needle. And I'm going to do the same on the outside of the eye. Yeah. So go in at the bottom, the neck, out next to the eye, in about a quarter of an inch from the, the first one, back to where you started. Pull it out. Pull both your strings until you're happy with the look you're getting. And tie a little knot. You will see as you tie it, it will even drag down a little bit more, forming those cute little cheeks. Cut off those strings. And there you got it. Just look at that, how it's now contoured. Your eyes is more inward now, making these little cheeks really ball out. We're now going to take um, a coloured pencil. Now I use um, Derwent uh, colored pencils. I'll show you what they look like. These are the Derwent Inktense colors. So just choose a color of your liking and then just gently where you want on your cheek. You're just going to brush until you see that, that color forming. And you can go as dark or as light as you want. So I'm just gently brushing on the, the color just to make it a little bit of a shade of a pink and on this cheek as well. Rosy little cheeks. You can see just the blush effect. Put your dummy on, make sure everything is the way you want it. 
put this to one side now. And now we're ready to attach the arms and the legs. Now first, if decide if you're going to have a static baby, static by meaning um, so the arms and le legs can't really move in a position, they are the way you stitch them together. Um, or if you're going to make it like this one where you can manipulate a little bit. So decide on, on which way you want. If you want it static, you will stitch it to the body, but you will go all around with your stitches. If you want it movable, you'll just stitch on that area and stitch it to an area there. We're going to turn around the thread quite a few times to form like a band in the middle. And then we're going to go through again um, a few times to really secure it and make sure it can't go anywhere. But generally, there's only a uh, band of stitches holding it. So that makes your arm being able to, to move up or down. Now, most kids, I think, would prefer the arms and legs to be able to move, so I'm going to do that method, showing you that method now. I'm going to take a nice long string. Let's take the other side. I just want to move this camera a little bit forward. To look as if uh, it should be better, otherwise, I have to work with long arms. Okay, I'm first going to decide where I want this arm. So, get a position not too far away, it should be around that area of, of the side and towards the top. It should almost touch the top of the head. So, it's going to be roughly in that area there. So, I'm just going to tie it in there. <coughs> Sorry. Cut off this long piece here. And just to make sure that I've caught it quite good, I'm just going to do a few stitches on the side there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now on the inside of the arm, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take quite a, a lump there. But I'm going to push the, you can see it's quite from that side to that side. It's about half an inch. And bring it as close to the body as you can. But you will be able to move it away a bit, then go through the body. And then start pulling it. And when you open it up, you'll be able to go into the arm, then into the body, then into the arm, then into the body. Really securing it, but all in the same Region, So you're not going all around the arm, around the shoulder uh, for a static arm, you're going to, or you're going to make it a movable arm. Now, if kids are going to play with this, we really need to secure it properly, otherwise they will just pick it up on the arm and the arm falls off. So do make sure that you tie it on. I'm just going to remove that dummy for now. Sorry, I pulled my thread from my needle now. I'm busy making a whole range of dolls for my little nieces so I really need to make sure that these arms are going to stay on so I'm going quite a few times okay when you're happy that the arm won't fall off take your thread and wind it a few times around the arm then you're going to do the same. You're going to go in to the body, into the arm. Until you satisfy that this is a really a strong hold and that this arm is not going to go anywhere. You can even, if you really feel like it, you can go a few uh, more turns around the arm. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my thread and pull it, push it right through to the other side of the body to where the other arm is supposed to be. And I'm just going to pull it tight. 
and then I'm going to do a few stitches on this side. This just makes sure, um, is ensuring that the arm will stay in place for extra support. Okay, then you can carry on with this arm and do the exact same thing. Just make sure your arm is the right way around, of course, when you stick it on, or when you stitch it on. So place your arm where you want it. We're already on that side, so just going to go through the arm and then through the body, exactly like I did for the other side. And the legs we're going to do in the same way, and then we will be all done, ready to our nappy. Gonna go around and around and around a few times, creating a, a little joint. And then through again. Through to the other side. Okay. Then I'm gonna move straight to a leg, and I'm gonna try and go to the opposite leg. So just make sure where you want your leg to sit. And take your needle and push it, push it, push it right through to where the, the leg is. So in actual fact, your arms and your legs is connected to each other as well. And then you can pull and make a few stitches to secure in place. Another piece here. Yeah. I'm just going to tie it on. I don't want to to stitch it in there. Bring my leg in a bit more or less in position and a stitch. Oops, there it can be. See, really easy, really nothing to it, not difficult at all. A little bit of hand work, but it's well worth it. I'm going to finish stitching the other leg on as well off camera and then I'll be back to show you how to do the napping. 
as you can see our little baby is now all assembled and ready for all the accessories we're going to add so let's start with the nappy just to recap I decided I'll or rather show you I've printed out my template by stucking my two pieces of paper together so again for the 5 by 7 hoop take your printed template place it onto your fabric and then cut a quarter of an inch now you can take your um, uh, just roughly it doesn't need to be perfect and I'm going to mark where my snaps are supposed to go my velcro pieces and where I need to leave an opening so there's my template marked out so I'm going to cut it out now and then I'm going to sew all around a quarter of an inch all around but I'm going to leave this part open I'll be back after I've done this I went ahead and stitched, as you can see, a quarter of an inch inward from where my marking is. So I'll just go ahead now and cut away on my um, draw line the extra fabric, leaving about a quarter of an inch to, uh, from the stitches. Leaving there where my uh, where the opening is, it's just those little tails. I'm now going to turn my nappy inside out. I'll now take it to the iron board to give it a nice press make sure everything lies nice and flat just push through these ones I'm going to fold in these little flaps like that and then I'm just going to top stitch but I'm first going to iron it so everything lies the way I want it and then I'll just top stitch on the top there and there you go all done and ready for the snaps now you can see the little dots coming through the fabric so I'm going to pull my machine closer um, I'm just going to do the blue one because I already took out my blue snaps And I'm using a little marking tool. I see this one is not marked, so I'm just going to mark it. I must have forgotten to do my markings before. There it is. Okay. Now um, you will notice the one side is if you if you pull it, push it on top of each other you'll see the one side is is longer than the front that is your back side so if you imagine that the nappy lying like that and this needs to come to the front and this needs to go to the front you, you want to see a solid button on top so start with that one I'll put my then in, then the other side goes into the machine, and then I just push that, and do 
it's attached. And I'm going to do the same with this back piece. Making sure I've got it the right way around. And for the front, you need the other part. You will notice if you is the, if it's the first time you're doing snaps, you will notice you've got three different parts. You've got the one with the pin. You've got one with a little band around, and then there's the other one that's a little bit flat on top. So you will use those two together, and you will use those two together, and that will make one closing area. So to be able to do the other side, I need, just need to add my other die in. These machines come with these dies where different uh, things go in. So I'll just use the other die for the other side. By the way, if you want to purchase a machine like this, um, you can purchase from camsnaps.com. The snaps is available from them as well. Okay, now we need to remember that what side we're going to do, it's going to go down there. So you need this little part to be on this side so that one can actually go into that one. So the solid part will be on the back this time. So we're pushing it in from the back into the machine and press down. Making sure that when you bring your nappy up that it does clip in. So you're going to now do the same with the other side. With our nappy now all done and finished, we're ready to dress our little baby. You can add hair if you want to girls, by all means you can get some f um, fake fur and put on the head or you can take some wool and make a, some hair. I like the bold babies so I'm just going to keep mine bold. So put your baby down and you can start adding the nappy. the dummy or pacifier I've got these cute little crochet shoes And of course the little bracelet, finishing touches, and she's all ready for her new home. Cute little baby, very easily done, very quick. Like I said, I made four in one day, so they really go fast. And I'm sure they will be a hit for Christmas gifts this year. You are allowed to make these babies and sell them on craft shows. I don't mind at all. I wish you all the best for lots of sales. And I hope you're having fun making these adorable little babies. Hope to see you all soon for another great tutorial. Thank you for watching. Just clipping your arms and your legs and your head on and it's perfectly movable after you are done. So by all means if you do want to use those discs do so but I'm not going to show you in this tutorial. I did not buy them. 
um, I decided to, to just hand sew mine. So let's get started on stitching these adorable little babies. <laughs> 